timing. Not only is it important for jokes, bad timing can mess up the usability of your apps. Today, I want to show you how bad timing made the search UI in one of my apps completely unusable. This is something that can happen to any app that communicates with a remote API, and I will show you a couple of strategies you can use to cope with this. Hey everyone, and welcome back to episode two in our series about SwiftUI concurrency essentials. In this series, I will teach you the key aspects you need to know about Swift's new concurrency features when building SwiftUI apps. So, let's take a look at the sample application. It's a simple search screen that makes use of SwiftUI's new searchable view modifier. This view modifier makes it really easy to add search fields to your UI. In this example, I want to use it to search for books on the Open Library API. That's an API that lets you search for books by title, author name, or ISBN. So the code for calling this API lives in this view model here. Here in the search books function, I use the async version of your illustration.data to call the API and search for books that match the search term. So the Open Library API is a rather slow API, and I wanted to display a progress spinner while waiting for the results to come in. So up here in execute query, I set the is searching flag to true before kicking off the search and back to false once the search has finished. Is searching is a published property that controls the visibility of the progress spinner. Down here in the search view, I use a conditional to show the progress spinner in an overlay whenever is searching is true. Cool. So this looks like a perfectly normal SwiftUI app, but there is a problem. If you know what's the problem, write it down on a piece of paper and hold on to it so we can compare notes after I've walked you through this. So let me run this and show you some really unexpected behavior. Right, so here we are in the search screen and let me search for hitchhiker. So after a little while, the search results come in, but something weird happens. It seems like the results are replaced with new results. And if you take a closer look at the final result, which should be coming in any second now, it seems like we're not seeing the search results for hitchhiker, but just for hate. Now, to get a better understanding of what's happening here, let me add some debugging code. So let's add a print statement, print starting search for current search term. And then down here, print search completed for current search term. And let's also print the number of results. Okay, cool. Let's run this again. Right, so here's the app. Now let me search for the same search term. All right, and now it becomes a little bit more obvious what's going on. So the app kicks off several search requests and they return one after the other but it seems they arrive out of order. For example, here's the one that has the results for the actual search term hitchhiker, but as you can see, there are several other requests that come in after that, and the final one to arrive is the one for the search term H, which in fact was the first search request we started. So this is completely broken. Let's see how we can fix this. So, in a first attempt to fix this, let's check out the debounce operator. So if you've used combine before, you might know that this is an operator which will keep track of incoming events and it will only let the most recent event pass through 
if a certain amount of time has elapsed. And we can use this to wait until the user has stopped typing before passing on what exactly they typed. All right, so the right spot for applying the debounce operator is in the onReceive modifier, where we listen to changes on the search term property. Since this property is a publisher, we can apply this debounce operator here and specify a due time of 0.8 seconds, just like this. So let's run this again. Search for hitchhiker. And we immediately see that instead of sending a new request for every single keystroke, we now send a single request for the final search term. Right, so this looks like we've solved the problem, right? But not so fast. Let me show you that this isn't the final solution. So let's assume the user starts typing and then pauses for a moment and then finishes typing. So hit, and then I'm not sure how to spell this, so I pause and then I continue typing. And in the console, you can see that we've sent a bunch of requests already. So this is clearly better than before, but we can do even better. Let's take a look at task cancellation. So when we create a new task using async, this call actually has return value. Let me show you. So here in the concurrency module, we've got the signature for async and you can see it returns a task handle. Let's go to the definition of task handle. Here it is. And here we've got a cancel function. The documentation says attempts to cancel the task. All right, so let's try this. Let's first define a property to hold this handle. So this should be private and let's call it search handle. And the type is task dot handle, and then we need to fill in the generics. So we don't return anything from the async call, so we can uh, specify void. And then because we're not throwing any errors, we can just say never as the error type. And then finally make this optional. Sweet. Now down here where we create the async task, we can now assign this to the new property, search handle equals async. And this will assign the handle to our new property. Now, the final thing to do is to cancel the previous task. And the right place to do this is right at the beginning of the execute query method. So let's call search handle dot cancel. Okay, let's try this again. But before we do, let me disable the call to debounce to make it easier to see what's going on. Okay, run the app again and type hitchhiker. As I type, you can see that the requests get canceled and return an empty result set. So this is pretty close to what we want, but you might have noticed that the progress spinner disappeared. So let's fix that. So why does it disappear? Well, if you look at the code, you will notice that the spinner is only ever turned on when we start a new request, but it is turned off when we cancel a previous request. So we need to guard this statement down here and only execute it if the task has finished. So if not task dot is canceled and then set a searching to false. Cool, let's run the app one more time. And then search for hitchhiker. So the spinner is spinning until the results come in. 
that's great. And now let's try deleting a couple of characters to see if this works as well. And as you can see, the spinner comes on while we'll wait for the search results and goes away as soon as the results come in. Nice. And with that, we fix the UX of this search screen by using task cancellation. And as a final step, we can reactivate the debounce operator to eliminate even more unnecessary requests. So let's run the app one more time and then pay attention to the log when I type and pause. And you can see we send fewer requests than before thanks to the debounce operator and all but the final requests are cancelled thanks to task cancellation. Sweet. So, did you take a note of what you thought what the problem with my code was? If you got it right, let me know in the comments. And if you thought it was something else, also let me know. So, Today, I showed you two ways how to improve your app's behavior when fetching data from remote APIs. Both task cancellation and debouncing are great tools to be aware of when building apps that face asynchronous behavior. And as you saw, it's easy to use both async await and combine in your Swift UI apps. And that's it for today. You can find the source code for the sample app on this GitHub repository. And if you'd like to learn even more about task cancellation and how to implement it in your own inner loops, check out this article on my blog. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.